and join us as we talk live with Dave Parkinson. Joining me now, David Parkinson. Joining us now at the table, Dave Parkinson, who's a social justice activist. He's director of the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. And also in Toronto, Dave Parkinson. He is the operator of the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty's website. It's this type of rhetoric that concerns Dave Parkinson. They're basically a coalition of two. Dave Parkinson, who has a clerical job in a Toronto law office, and his wife Tracy Lamory, who's in sales and a new mother. Since 1998, in their basement in Scarborough, Ontario, they've mounted a grassroots campaign against the death penalty. The Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. I want to thank you for being with us as well, Dave. Thank you for having me on. You know, Dave, interesting website you've got. You give death row inmates their own website on the internet, but why? Yeah, we've had the death penalty here in Canada in the past, and we realized that it was wrong. These groups believe the web is an important tool, helping educate the public about the incarcerated and argue against the death penalty. If these individuals were sent to life in prison, um, as they would be in most other free countries of the world, there would be no need for our outreach. In order to protect society, lock them up. If they're really that bad, throw away the key. But the moment you're executing them, you're no better than the murderer. Uh, the death penalty has been abolished in almost every free country of the world. The only United States ally right now that still practices capital punishment is Japan. And they put to death about as many people in a year as the United States does in a week. So we look at this not necessarily from a crime and punishment perspective, but Who as a human judging? rights Who are you to be judging what goes on in this country? This a victim of such a, a heinous crime, my first thought would be to grab the person and kill them myself. And I think any living, breathing individual would have that same impulse. But upon reflection... Um, I'm not going to go out and commit a murder, and I don't expect that my politicians, or my government, or my courts are going to commit that murder on my behalf to make me feel better. The Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty and um, uh, homes for the disabled uh, were opened up to the public, and people came in and saw the conditions that these people were subject to. There was changes. In uh, when, you at, when you look at things like victims' rights legislation, where they allow the victims to come up on the stand and testify about all the pain that they've gone through. So basically what you're saying is, in the event of a person being murdered, if it was a, a homeless prostitute who was murdered and she has no family or friends to come up it, during the victim impact statement and get the jury all riled up and upset as you've expressed here today then obviously they're going to be a lot less likely to go with a death sentence whereas if the whole community comes out and speaks out and everyone gives a victim impact statement and has the jury all teary-eyed teary as they go off into deliberations obviously they're going to be more likely to come back with a death sentence in that case so there's no way to properly legislate what it is you say that you would like to see implemented Somehow, David, the papers are increasingly full over the last year or so of accounts of Canadians who have wound up in terrible trouble overseas. Mm -hmm. Is this because of 9-11, because of the security situation, or is something else account for it? I think it's a combination of both. Certainly since 9-11, we've seen um, security agencies around the world being uh, a little more than trigger happy, especially when it comes to um, people of Muslim background. Um, however, this has been a situation that's been going on for some time, um, whether it be the case of Mr. Sampson in Saudi Arabia or a few years ago the case of Stanley Falder in, uh, in Texas, who was facing execution in, uh, when George Bush was governor there. 35,000 people a year die from gun violence in this country, and you're telling us we don't need some kind of harsh punishment for the kind of violence that we have in this country? The international, who are you? Mr. Class, the international, the international community. You look at me, at... buddy. You look at me. Well, the politicians played the role when Alan Rock decided to send them back without assurances. Now, with our um, extradition treaty that we have with the United States, it is in our extradition treaty that we have every right to seek those assurances before we send them back. Um, the Supreme Court decision in this case and in many others, what the Supreme Court is, is there to police our, our parliamentary system. When politicians go a little too far and start violating charter rights and start infringing on the rights of Canadians and on citizens, our Supreme Court there is is there to make these decisions on behalf of the Canadian public to protect us and protect our charter rights and that's what they've done in this instance so it's not a case of the Supreme Court overriding the law the Supreme Court is the law and it's there to protect the rights the fundamental rights of Canadian citizens and that's what they've done in this case when election time comes round and I go vote and I put my ballot in the box the last thing I expect is that the leader that I'll be choosing will have the power to take Canadians put them in prisons and put them to death. I, I have a quote here from what Mr. David says on the website. His existence is offensive. Mr. Your existence is offensive. Okay, Mark, well, one second. Dave, I'm going to... You know, the French with the guillotine, firing mm -hmm. squads, hanging, electrocution. I mean, none of it pleasant.
No, well, at this point, uh, the, the vast majority of states uh, have switched to lethal injection. Uh, and if the United States uh, is going to remain as one of the few countries left in the Western Hemisphere that still executes its own citizens, then obviously the American public and the rest of the world public have the right to know who the United States government has deemed worthy of death. They can go around and they can throw around Old Testament law, the Book of Deuteronomy, an eye for an eye. But if they do, they should take it in context. That means you'll also be taking your disobedient son out of the city and stoning him to death. You'll take your disobedient wife or your non-virgin wife out of the city and stone her to death for her transgressions. But they never mention that part. They just quote the eye for an eye. But uh, again, this doesn't take away from the fact that these people are being put to death. And regardless of the method of execution, mm -hmm. uh, the fact remains at the end of the day, these people are dead. Yeah. They don't. That he's no, confident. they don't, because if they did, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. To me, Sir, what and we're every doing other is what person, Amnesty International is doing, the Vatican is doing, the European day, Union, day. the United Nations, and the international community. Guys, I'm sorry, we lost that connection. We're running out of